Here is another video in our open floor plan two-story home design. And in this one here, we're going to take a look at the second story wall framing. And uh, before we do that, get started, I'm going to go ahead and remove everything underneath the wall framing so that we do not have anything in our way. So the first thing I want to point out is the top plates. Um, most structural engineers require a four foot minimum length of lumber. That'd be a top plate or a bottom plate between breaks. So this would be a break here. So if we have another break here, this cannot be smaller than four foot. Otherwise, otherwise we got to put a strap on it. Um, so there is a way to fix that. It's just as you're laying out the walls, you're going to want to try and get these breaks um, a little further away from the possible breaks in the top plates. So just keep that in mind. View from the front window here, and I have two blocks. The blocks in the window can be in the middle. Um, some people put them in the middle of the window framing. Uh, that's fine. Um, some of them put them in the middle of the wall. Kind of makes sense um, either way. If it was me, I think I'd put them in the middle or just a little bit higher than the middle um, because you're going to want to keep this whole area from shifting to one side. And that's actually what these blocks are going to help you do. If you don't have the blocks in there, um, yes, uh, and this board was to bow in this direction, it could pull the window frame over. If um, you have another stud here, this is going to provide you with a little bit of resistance. If you block all the way across, it's not moving. So uh, mid-span blocks, my dad was a big fan of them, and uh, I tried... You know, this is about the minimum for me. Um, you know, the corners, I wouldn't even put them in the corners half the time. But uh, my dad was a big fan of it. He believed that mid-span blocking prevented the wall framing studs from bowing and twisting. And it would have actually led to doing less wall straightening when you're doing what we used to call pickup. We used to, uh, um, someone would go around, we'd have hourly workers that would go around and uh, straighten the wall framing studs. Um, with planers or with cardboard strips and uh, stuff like that. And he was a big fan. He believed that it, you weren't going to be doing as much work. So it's kind of like you're putting a little more work into something in the beginning. And then um, you won't have that way you don't have to do more in the um, at the end when the home is built. So the blocks around the doors. Here we can see where we have a um, one king stud and then a trimmer. This is a standard type of wall framing for a door that's going to open basically up against a wall. And then the block, you put a block in here, make sure that you lower it so that you are not going to have it in the way of your light switch electrical boxes. That's another um, problem. And I actually just uh, took a tour of some new house framing um, on some track framing and um, they had a couple of blocks in the way and you're thinking like no way you know they just you think that they wouldn't be doing that but again it goes back to experience and if you have somebody that doesn't know which now you know um, then uh, um, when you do make the mistake you can just say ah crap just like I would I would do if I did it again so again the block is lower here and we can see the wall framing stud 16 inches on center. And uh, this was the laundry room stairwell. Of course, we have a window in the stairwell. Give us some light into the stairwell. And um, this one, this is a bathroom, closet, bedroom. Another view, and this is the master bedroom, master bath, master closet. Another view of the bedroom or the master bathroom. And I just kind of wanted to point out that if you come to an area where you have, you know, a half inch gap, three quarters of an inch, something like that, you can always use a scrap piece of plywood or a one by six, something like that. I, I remember framers cutting small blocks in here that were like an inch wide. And when they would go to nail them on each side, it would just split the block. So a one by something like that usually seems to work better in the small gaps like this. And I'm just going to kind of uh, go a little faster through here. I noticed I was already four minutes, four minutes into the video here and uh, probably said all that I need to 
say about the wall framing but we'll continue to fill the uh, provide filler information like the newscasters do when they uh, tell you that there's a we've got a top story here and then it takes them uh, 15 minutes to get to the top story that's what I'm doing right now just filling some stuff in there it's closets and a lot of times your closet um, header is going to be a little higher or a little lower than your door header. So sometimes the framer, the layout crew, might come in and frame it at the same height. But you better make sure that you check, you know what all the um, rough openings need to be for these areas. Um, that you've either purchased your um, doors or your finished uh, closet doors, stuff like that. Um, or just like I said, at least you know what they are. I can't tell you how many times I came to a project and uh, it was all drywalled and finished, textured and painted. Um, or you'd be come in and put your door in and uh, there'd be an inch. You'd have to fill it in the top and put some trim on it or something to make it look right. So that is it for the video. And I uh, wanted to point out if you actually made it this far in the video, you must be interested in it. Make sure that you hit the old thumbs up button um, and let us know what you think by uh, sharing a comment in the comment area. And it is off to the next video.